You know, just two weeks before that blockbuster news of Microsoft agreeing to buy electricity from Three Mile Island, Barron's wrote an article about this new nuclear age. And the article noted that uh, share price gains had already been made by the owner of Three Mile Island, the Constellation Energy. And that was before, like, the 35% move it's made since fr Friday. But Nexia says, though, that there are two critical considerations, right, with all of this. A, we need more electricity, and B, there's nothing to fear when it comes to nuclear. I want to bring in now Power the Future founder, executive director, Daniel Turner. Hey, Daniel, uh, you know, so this deal needs regulatory approval, but I, I got to tell you, even for an administration that has stepped in to stop small, nonsensical deal, you know, deals that should not be stopped, I, 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 I dare anyone to stand in the way of this one. Oh, absolutely. This should get a green light across the board, and we should be encouraging more of this. In fact, if you go to the great state of New York, where I'm originally from, they should reopen Indian nuclear power point. Governor Cuomo closed that, and Governor Hochul has done nothing as a result. So we should be reopening all of these plants that have been shut down under crazy green environmental policy, because we need a lot more electricity. Goldman Sachs says we need 160% more electricity by 2030 because of AI and data centers. So we should be reopening these plants everywhere. Yeah, I mean, and to your point, you, you note that in your work, uh, the beginning of this new technological leap uh, requires a lot of power. Meanwhile, though, there is some talk now of opening uh, several nuclear power plants that have been shut down in the last 10 years. We'll put up a list of some of them for the, uh, for the viewers to look at because it's not just data centers, right? It's the electric cars and all these other things. And you know, to your point, I'm so afraid that the notion of solar and wind uh, is, will, will save the day. I, I think we'll, we'll put ourselves in a, in a really difficult position. We will. And, and wind and solar are intermittent. They're, they're very expensive. Uh, they're made in China predominantly. They're from uh, raw materials that are sourced in sub-Saharan Africa uh, using slave labor, right? Wind and solar have an awful lot of problems. Um, but again, in this Microsoft example, why are they opening up nuclear plants? It's because nuclear works. Uh, China is building the equivalent of a coal mine every week. Why? Because fossil fuels always work. China's not going to risk their manufacturing center on wind and solar. And Microsoft's not going to risk its data center on wind and solar. So it only seems to be the American people who are stuck with this intermittent and lousy green technology. Another thing I want to get your thoughts about, the, these, the gimmicks, these carbon credits and carbon capture and all those sort of things, uh, you know, obviously to avoid penalties, but I was just reading an article about the emissions from Google, Microsoft, Meta, and Apple. They're like seven times, more than seven times the official tally. I mean, it's a, it seems to me to be a farce that's not helping. Absolutely. Uh, and look, people like Al Gore have made hundreds of millions of dollars in carbon credit swaps. Um, but we've seen credit swaps do a lot of damage to other sectors, mainly the housing sector about a decade ago, right? So this is just the newest fad. And I'm not going to knock any company that gets involved because they want to get the government off its back. They mm -hmm. want to keep environmental uh, activists out of their lobby. Um, but this is just an enormous shell game. And I think it's going to end poorly for the economy because eventually it's going to collapse. There's no valid uh, 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 value. There's no financial incentive to be involved in these nonsensical schemes. It's just an appeasement mechanism. And we need adults in charge again, Charles. No more of these silly games. Daniel, then before I let you go, uh, on that note, it feels like considering what's at stake, because it feels like the nation that controls data centers, and right now we've got the biggest lead, will be the preeminent nation in the world. Do we call off the war on fossil fuels? Absolutely. We have to. Uh, and, and, you know, Kamala Harris even knows that enough to win. I don't think she'll actually do it, but right. she's called off her war on fracking. She's reversed course on her EV uh, car mandates. So suddenly uh, Kamala Harris is an energy advocate. She's bragging about oil production numbers. I don't know where she's been the last three and a half years. Yeah. So I, I, I doubt that she's sincere. I think she's just desperate and has a lust for power. Um, but if we really want to advance as a country, we want to win the AI war, we need to call off all of this war on, on American energy and let the fossil fuel sector and the nuclear sector thrive. Yeah. You know, I, I think she realizes that the American public has, has a, to your point, the American public understands what's at stake. Uh, but I do worry about the whole bait and switch stuff. Uh, Daniel, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.